Good morning, Uganda. This is the National Schools Championship. And in case you think we left, we are back like we never did. It was just a small break for us to re-strategize on how to work within the new normal. We had conversations and trainings on different topics in the regions of Wain before that was the North and the East. And today we continue what we couldn't do in the Central and the West because of the lockdown that was imposed on us. I hope you are taking care, keeping safe, observing the SOPs, wearing your mask. I had to put down mine just so I can be audible, but sanitize as much as you can. And today we continue those sessions. We're going to talk about how to build a profitable business and I can't wait for us to get into it. But just before we do, I'd like to introduce Barbara, who is a CSI manager at Sandvik Bank. And remember, whatever your dream is, we believe that it can be. My name is Dokas. Are you ready to get in? Hmm? Yeah. Just in case you're not sure you are. Yeah. Barbara. Yeah. Barbara is going to give us the right footing for us to dive into this session. As I hope you get your notebooks and pens ready as we learn how to build a profitable business. Barbara, you're welcome. <laughs> Dorcas, Dorcas, thank you very, very much. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. National Schools, as always, we are very excited to be back on this platform where we can show the talent that young people in Uganda have. Ladies and gentlemen, the sad fact is the virus is here. I was a victim, but that was then, and I conquered and I'm still surviving, and I'm still standing. And today, I want to tell you that it does not matter where you are on this planet, but you need to know that no matter what happens, you can beat this. I love times of crisis, because in times of crisis, that's when we discover who we are. So who are you today, you know? And as we get into our program today, which is very exciting, we as national schools, we want to show you that in spite of what is going on, you can do whatever you want to do, whatever, whatever you put your mind and your heart to. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, today we want to bring you the message of you can do whatever you put your hand to. So in today's message, definitely these are trying times. I mean, if you're starting a business, you can imagine today it's in the lockdown in Uganda. You're trying to start a business. What is that? Can you even actually do it? Is it possible? Well, I'm here to tell you that it is. And there's a wonderful gentleman. I call him an inventor. He's one of the greatest men I know. This man thinks of something and he does it. You don't normally meet people. And it doesn't matter what time or what you know it is. He will do it no matter what. And I cannot tell you how excited I am to have him here today on this platform to show you that it is possible to build a profitable business. But before we get into that, I want you to think about the possibility of you making a change in your community, in the area in which you live, because you can do it. And without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce, I call him uncle. <laughs> Uncle Dennis Lindo to tell us what it means to have a profitable business in these times. Because we believe if Uganda is our home, it definitely can be. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and enjoy the session. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody, on the Stanbic National School Championship. I had a mask, so. I'll just put it down. Uh, it's tough times we are going into. We need to also sanitize and uh, keep our lives very well. We thank the Lord that um, Barbara was able to overcome this, and uh, many people definitely are overcoming this. It's a great opportunity to be once again here. I remember we were here when we were in the last lockdown, and uh, we were going through a lot of things. Unfortunately, we were able to come back to you with the various teams that came to talk to you about the different aspects of our different programs. But within this particular period in time, I've been really ably introduced. My name is Dennis Lindo. I am a businessman. I am a coach for businesses. I do quite a lot of uh, engagements. I'm within the education sector. 
I'm also within uh, the security sector, private security, and I'm also now going into trying to venture into making sure that we get more other ideas that will come as I will be sharing with you as we go on. Today, it's a dilemma. Many of us, especially those that have been working and in various organizations, we are in those uh, situations where you have to work from home and it's not as normal and as usual as it has been. Although we've got a glimpse of it in the first COVID uh, round, so it's a bit not very new to us, but nevertheless, 42 days could be anything that you can think about beyond now. Seated at home, trying to figure out how it happened. I had a chance to go through the business district, and the business district was almost empty. The shops are closed, so you're running your business. Now, you're closed and you're thinking about uh, how do you go about this. It's a typical, difficult situation, but it's never always going to be like this. We need to build new strategies. We need to get where we must be and make sure that we get out of there. Now, in a nutshell, whether we are in a lockdown or we are running business has no more. It is imperative that what we do must be profitable. If it is not profitable, then we get a big challenge. Why? Because then that business, whether lockdown or not, and if that business is not profitable, soon or later, that business is going to close. So the only reason why businesses must thrive, must be able to run, is because we have done a lot of planning and a lot of preparation to make sure that these businesses are going to be are profitable. I just need to take you through a small analogy here. If somebody wants to build a house, they'll look at this house in terms of before, in their mindset, and get to know what this house is going to be for. Is it going to be for my personal use? Is it going to be for rentals? Is it going to be for what kind of house is it going to be? They must think about where the house is going to be built because entirely dependent on where that house is, then that is very important for the use that house is going to be. If it's going to be for your personal use, you probably can put it anywhere. But if it's going to be for business, then that house must be thought about in terms of its location, the number of rooms this house is going to be, the kind of materials you're going to be using to have this house into place. And then it enables you to make sure that you not only plan so well, but actually you go stage by stage to ensure that this house is going to be. If it was a car that somebody wanted to build, to buy, people think about what car they need, what kind of consumption this car is going to have, what kind of uh, you know, space that this car is going to be having. So in everything we do, including business, all those thoughts have to go be. Now, there's a tendency that a lot of people start businesses. Because they're doing businesses from a copycat culture. I have seen somebody is able to start something, and then I'm also going to do it. But ideally, we are supposed to think about our businesses just as much as we should be able to think about even all those other things we get engaged in, like I've shared with a car, or even I've shared with somebody trying to build and put up a house. From the onset, we are supposed to have had an idea about our business. And if we have an idea about our businesses, then it enables us to be able to put ourselves into a position where we are going to make these businesses work. Now, if a business is not going to make profit, then the business should not run. If a business is not going to make profit, it should never even be started in the first place. And many times we start these businesses and we've not thought about almost all these great things. Now, from school, we are technically taught about a number of things about profit. But probably before I go there, I need to define what a business is. A business is an organization or an enterprising entity which is engaged in commercial, industrial, or professional activities. So, if you're having something you're going to be doing and it has a commercial element, an industrial element, and also a professional element, then that business becomes a critical aspect that you are going to start. So we need to define that business. You must be engaged in a commercial activity or an industry activity or a professional service that you're going to be 
orienting and giving to people, then that makes it start to be business. But for a purpose, that when you do this, you are providing a need and solving a need, but also at the end of the day, you are leveraging on that process as you provide and solve that need, there must be a return on your investment. So it's very important for us to know a business. Now, sometimes also business refers to organized activity. How organized? Individuals can organize and you produce goods and services that are going to be given out to people at a markup or a margin. And the moment you have that element, then you know that your business or your idea is within a business framework because then you have a cost of producing those goods and having them available. But then when you put on your margin or you put on a markup, then that becomes your profit threshold that you're going to be having for that business. So it's important from the onset that as we think about these businesses, we know exactly why we are there. Some people have to understand and all of us, the reasons why people generally, there could be many, but generally, why people would start a business. Some people start a business to satisfy a need, and that's what really picks my test as Dennis Lindo. I am excited whenever there is a need solution. Some people want to start a business because they want to have financial independence. People want to have financial independence, and when you have financial independence, it becomes free, that you are not tied because of the next paycheck from day one to day 30. People want to have job security. Today, with this COVID-19, you realize that it's important to have job security. Now, with companies downsizing, we downsized in the first phase. Now, we also probably downsizing into this one. Then people are saying, what next? So, job security in your own business, the only person who can fire yourself. So, you have jobs. So, the other reason why people would want to start a business is to create jobs. Because when you start that business, you create jobs. You employ quite a number of people, and then you also control your lifestyle and your schedule. So, those are very good, plausible reasons why somebody would start a business. But also, some people do businesses because they have a vision to sort out what we call social injustices. If I am starting a business and I'm, I'm trying to sort out social injustices, I'll start that business because then I want this business to be able to provide solutions to a number of people that probably are less privileged. So there are many reasons why people start businesses. However, it is important, therefore, to, for us to know that there is a difference between a businessman and an entrepreneur. Everything an entrepreneur does and a businessman does ends up being the business we are talking about. But you see, an entrepreneur starts a new idea, non-existent, and sets it up. And that's where most of us are going to be in this space, especially as we are talking about COVID-19. You are home, and then you are saying, what do I need to start? But a businessman already does an existing business and then all starts, uh, uh, runs an existing business and ensures that this existing business runs and is profitable. But an entrepreneur creates one where there isn't. So there's a very important aspect for us to understand the two the distinctions. Whichever, whether an entrepreneur or a businessman, your profitability is not debatable. You must be profitable because when you are profitable, then that means this business is going to survive a lifetime. But if a business is profitable, it means it generates a value. So there's a financial gain. There's a gain that comes into this business channel. Because then as a channel of business, you are profitable. That means this business is useful to the person who has set up this business. Ladies and gentlemen, all of us want to do business. Some of us have been called to do business. Some of us are going to follow the people that are doing business. But it is possible for us to get to the level where all of us actually can act as if we are called. I need to interject in here a little bit. There is knowledge that some of us are going to be having because as you have this knowledge, you've learned it in school. For instance, we've learned that for you to be able to make some profit, you needed to have generated a number of sales. You needed to have produced goods of a good quality. You needed to have 
produce goods that are going to be yearned for people in order for you to generate sales. You need to have gotten a market share. These are things that are going to generate sales because it is from sales that we determine whether you've been profitable or not. Where there are no sales, we cannot even talk about profit. So you needed to grow your market. You needed to expand your business. You needed to extend, expand your operations in a way that it makes it possible for you to generate the required sales from which we are going to determine whether you're going to make a profit. Friends, very important. The number of the units that you make and the margins you make on each of those units determine whether you're going to make a profit or not. Now, you can have a unit like what I would have here, or you can have even a service like many times we can see in many of those service provisions that are given. Now, you must be able to lower down your production costs in order for you to be profitable at that stage. You must be able to lower your production cost. Then you must be able to provide the value of that unit. In other words, when I produce this at X value, then finally I get what comes out of it. The cost of making this must be lower such that when I'm able to sell this now, which is the transformation of this production process, when I'm able to sell this slightly at a higher price than my production cost, the difference is what makes that profit. So if the business is able to make that profit, then it creates very, very important avenues for this business to grow. Friends, I must let you know that when a business has got income that has come from quality, it has come from service delivery, it has come from customer care, it has come from your growth of the market share, it has come from the different products that you're producing, it has come from the innovations that you're likely to be having to make sure that this business runs. Yes, that creates a great, a great opportunity for this business to thrive. Now, knowledge talks about reduction of operating costs, reduction of overhead, reduction of all those things that are going to take away your money, like peripherages, like leakages. If you have that reduction and your income is at a certain level, then definitely you're going to make money. So one of the reasons why businesses fail to make profit, first and foremost, if your products are overpriced, if your products are overpriced, then you're going to have a negative backlash. Clients are not likely to come to you. Now, when I listen to the telecoms today, I can see people thrashing and cutting prices as a result of this cutthroat competition. You must be able to live within a space that you are able to lead the pack and be able to know what is the trend. Now, I'll go to that sector. I need to exhaust the knowledge base. The knowledge base from what we learned from school, your production cost must be lower. And if they are lower, then you are likely to make at least the first stage of making profit. Secondly, your operational costs, I'm talking about the expenses that you actually endure to make sure that this product is produced, for this product to be come to get onto the market, those operational costs must also be put lower. I am talking about your overhead, I am talking about all these things that you spend on the rent, the salaries, the water view, all those things, the utilities that you seem to be working on must be able to put lower in order for you to be able. But you see, a business can actually make profits by having a profit margin on a product. That's one level. The second level, a business can have profits by lowering its operational and overhead. That is also another level. But then what happens still, the business not only becomes profitable, but eventually dies because there is also what we do with the profit. If our profits have been gotten into the business, and those profits are not able to be plowed back into business for business growth, then that becomes a very big problem. Now, remember, our topic is how to build a profitable business. 
Now, we are not talking about building a profitable business at production level only. We are not talking about building a profitable business at after the operational cost, then you get to know where is my net profit. We are not only just talking about those two scenarios. We are talking about even when you've made the profit. What happens? A lot of us get excited at that level. Remember, there is excitement at level one where people have made a profit on just the difference between production and sales. Now, you've produced goods, you've sold them, you've made a profit. So at that level, people get very excited. That is rule number one. People, A lot of people die around that time because that excitement brings a lot of problems. But there is also a second level where you've done a little bit of that number one and now you've also done your, you've taken off your operational costs and the overheads and uh, you've made a profit. Another excitement gets into. Now, a lot of businesses do not even get beyond the first level where there's a difference between production and sales. And now, a few cross over and they're able to take off their operational costs and overheads and actually able to make profit. Now, the third layer where the businesses will be able to grow is when you're able to manage the excitement after your overheads have been taken away. A lot of people decide to divert that money and that money goes into other different things that don't seem to be able to add value to the growth of this business. And usually, what was originally a profitable business, a business failed. Now, I need to interject in a little bit here. There is something called knowledge, but there is also something called wisdom. In my understanding, I have come to learn with over 15 to 20 years of consultancy for businesses and doing audits for different businesses, SMEs, and large businesses. I have come to realize that there are other things that will help us to structure a profitable business. Now, the other ones are academic, but these are things that an entrepreneur is likely to have, and if they don't have them, no matter how much you make at those two levels I've already shared, these businesses will end up not being very profitable. Like I've talked about the house, I've talked about the car, all of us go through those extensive decisions just to make sure that we are going to acquire them or put them into those particular places. Now, the entrepreneurs that have seen, that have made it, are these type of things that would actually also help in making and building a profitable business. Number one, all of us must be visionary. In other words, where do you want to see this business? Between now and the next five years to come. If you don't expect this business to actually go three, three, four, five years beyond, then you're likely not even to be profitable in the short run or even in the medium run and in the long run. But also there is a choice of the business idea. Profitability is not at the end of this transaction. I have come to find out that your profitability is predetermined by the area you want to go. I know that there are very profitable areas of business. I know that people who want to go and do gold, gold is very profitable. I know that there are people who want to go and do lots of great things into whatever they want to do. I'm talking about the idea. The ideas that are very profitable are only known by people who, are, who have wisdom, not knowledge. Knowledge teaches us the A, B, C, Ds, and the to-dos. But I have seen that a lot of profit is determined by what idea you go to. So there must be an entrepreneur eye. There must be an entrepreneur mindset that looks and scans the environment as you sit into this lockdown to get to know what is it possible for me that I can do. The other thing I've seen which creates a profitable business is when the entrepreneur immerses themselves into this business. I have seen people going for swimming. I don't like it because I am told, I'm told that uh, fish, don't, fish, fish don't bathe even when they live in water, so I don't want to be like fish. But let me tell you something very, very, very interesting. I have seen people immersing themselves like you go into the swimming pool and you get down there. The business people that have made profit immerse themselves into this business. Now, I want you to think of about that dive. You can know this knowledge, which is in business, which is taught in business school, all these degrees that all these guys are getting. But let me tell you, if you don't immerse yourself, 
then you can't have a structure of profit in your business. I have seen people who are imaginative. When that imagination gets into, people become imaginative, people become creative, people develop skills. I, I mentioned beforehand that I do a lot of consulting for both SMEs and large and medium enterprises. I have come to notice that majority of my clients, without naming any, I have not gone to even beyond P5, P6. They've not gone to university. They've not gone to senior four. And they employ over 500, 400 people in one enterprise. Somebody has four or five enterprises. So what is the difference between we who speak a lot of good English and you and the other fellow who doesn't speak English at all? It is knowledge versus wisdom. Now, I've realized that without wisdom, and wisdom is not bought in any university, wisdom comes from observing and being there. Just like you observed how, how who taught you how to suckle your mother's breast, those of you that breastfed. I can see some of us were, were not able to be breastfed very well. But yes, yes. But the point I'm saying, you learn it. You learn it. And it comes from an element of wisdom. Now, I have seen people who are actually able to diversify at the right time. Many of us, when I talked about the other profit levels, people quickly diversify into different things. A profitable business needs to be given a bit of some ground, and it's needed to be given. That's why when I talk to them, when I get to some of these clients of mine, and I try to become excited because I'm seeing the billions of shillings, they're making us profit. Then I try to tell them, why don't we diversify? He tells you, ah, uh ah, -uh. let us focus. He knows that one particular aspect. Diversification is good, but at what point do you diversify? A lot of us try to do all sorts of things and we become jacks of all trades and masters of none. I have seen in these businesses that as you lay the profit structure, as you lay the profit foundation, you must be able to promote and reward people properly. We, in, in school, we are talking about lowering costs, uh, your overheads, everything. That is academic. I have seen people who are able to make money and become more profitable when they get a, a, a justice system within their environment that rewards. I met one man, not very far away from this town, it's on Entebbe Road. And he says, if you work for me for seven years, I give you a plot. If you work for me for 12 years, I put in a house for you. And I'm talking about affluent places here in Luvoa, what have you, what we are talking about in this area. So this guy, the profit ability is not academic anymore. He says, and I asked him, why do you do so? He says, because these people are the ones who do the business for me. They are the ones who are in this business. So every worker is fighting to make sure that they can actually get to seven years because now they're going to get a plot in an affluent place. And maybe at 12 years, they're going to get another house. Now, this worker who works like that cannot even steal things. So we are not talking about losses in terms of like you've made losses because you're not selling at a profit. You're avoiding losses because the losses are not coming as a result of leakages. These guys become like the second or the first eye of the owner. If I was government, I would be talking about these guys become your RDCs. They are everywhere looking at things for you. So you can imagine if I don't want to become political here. But if every RDC was to be given a house, there will be very effective RDC. Now, going back to business, I am saying something very serious. Very serious here. So you must reward people and promote them against what it is that they've done for you. But I've also realized that half of the guys that I do consultancy for hardly walk into a bank. Now, Sandvik Bank, we must listen to this. As the school's national championship, but also as a way to move into any of these areas. Every big guy I'm talking about in this town has resorted not to work with the bank. You know why? Because our interest rates are seemingly beyond a certain point. Now, I know Stanbic has very good interest rates, but I've also come to find out very seriously that many of these entrepreneurs now are working with what we call supplier credit. A, a supplier in Oslo, a supplier in Turkey, a supplier in China can be able to give me produce or product and I'm able to sell at almost zero interest rate. So these guys, every time I come with this knowledge, one Waiseka of a consultant and tell him, suppose we get some uh, capitalization from where? 
The moment I mention a bank, he says, keep it up, just shut up. The guy is able to get 15, 20 containers on credit for a grace period of so much, many months, and is able to remit this money back. Now, it brings me to the point that knowledge tells me that you must get a bank loan. But wisdom now says, how do I circumvent the bank loan? And these guys who I'm telling you are P5 are able to compute for you the difference between their profitability as when they use the supplier credit option vis-a-vis -vis what it would be like with the bank. Friends, wherever you are, we need to have wisdom. Let me tell you something very interesting. These guys who have not gone to school actually are the very first ones that are very interested in keeping the record. The difference is that their records are in their brain. They are able to keep records at an amazingly a rate that many of these computers are not able to. They're able to tell you that I'll bring in three containers, 15 containers, this is the quantity. He knows the tax already. But now they've come to realize that it's important. We must keep records. We must re re record. We must summarize. We must analyze. We must interpret and get the desired information. So you find them employing people like me and you out there who has been now laid off from an organization who is sitting in COVID to work for them. It is very important to keep track. They keep track of those details. Then the other thing I'm finding out that makes and affects the profit base is timely decision making. At what point do you determine that I'm going to diversify? At what point do you determine that I'm going to downsize? At what point do you determine that I'm going to bring in this difference? At what point do you decide that I need now supplier credit? Because even suppliers work with people that have got a track history. So there is a lot of wisdom that comes when you are going to do and run a profitable business. I have also seen that half of these people are very ruthless when it comes to debt collection. Debt collection is a problem in this country. Now, you've started this business, and I know as even banks would want to talk to me and even get to know, it is very difficult to collect money that you've sold business. So these guys have got a very robust credit system. They can never give you credit. They can never give you credit unless if they find you have a relationship with them that actually surpasses all understanding. In order for you to be credit worthy, my colleagues, my friends, in order for you to be credit worthy, because when you're credit worthy, and especially from suppliers, then you stand a chance to make a profitable, a bed for a profitable business in your organization. Friend, I must tell you, when you want to qualify for credit, you must be dependable, you must be reliable, you must be trustworthy, and you must be predictable. I must repeat this one. You must be dependable. Now, if you're dependable, you are like this. You are dependable. In other words, people can depend on your word. When you are reliable, it means that there's a difference between being reliable and dependable. In football, we depend on the goalkeeper and we rely on the strikers to get us the goal. So that's the difference between the two goals. In the army, we depend on the infantry and we rely on the air force. So you must be dependable and reliable. Then you become insubocable. I know that's a new terminology. You become insubocable. So it's very important for you and me to understand that if you're going to make money, you're going to make profit, you must be insubocable. In other words, when they look for whom shall we supply, whom shall we engage, they only depend and rely on you. But listen, if you are dependable, reliable, and trustworthy, you become ungendicable. Yeah, yes, I need you to understand. So you become ungendicable. So I want you to be a businessman who is going to set their business on profit and build it on those terminologies because you must be one that everybody thinks about. Whom shall we send in Isaiah 6, 8 says, here I am, send me, use me. So you must be at that kind of level of a businessman. Now, there must be somebody who is going to compliment other people. You are not going to make profit, even from the textbook, if you don't compliment. I have seen the owners of these businesses, other than just being immersed into their business, they are available. They've served me tea. I don't want to mention some of these names because they've not paid for the advertising. 
But for purposes of just making it pure that I have gone to some of these very great cafes that you know around, and the owner comes and is the one picking your beer. Compliment each other. Profit does not come just because you know how to calculate profit and loss. No. Profit comes from the inculcating of a culture of complementability. If you're the boss, I don't need even to know that you're the boss. Because the boss is determined by the final paycheck that gets into your profit bottom line. That's where we know bosses. So let me tell you, it's very important. Now, there's a lot of learning when I work with people that actually know less of this business in terms of its formation. But they know their particular area very well. One of the businesses I'm doing is uh, um, I'm doing uh, uh, breeding dogs and uh, doing, uh, I mean, this time of security, so people need a lot of security. So, yeah, there's a lot of things that we do. So we handle different kind of things, you know, the German Shepherds, the, you know, the pit bulls, the, name them, all those great dogs that you can think about. But when you're dealing with a dog handler and a dog handler tells you that this dog doesn't like you both, you don't stay there because you stay there, it will go with your hand. So then I've also realized that uh, when you complement each other and you're likely to be with each of these people at their different level, within their different levels of the business, then you learn things from them. Now I know dogs don't take salt. I didn't know. If you give them salt, there's a problem. I also know that they don't like to be exposed to almost every Tom, Dick, and Harry, like especially this during this time when people have been wanting to come and visit everybody. These dogs just need to know one particular person. So I've come to learn that. But I've also learned that they're not, they're not bribable. So where we have been guarding and we have this Kuria Kushoto Nyuma Geuka left, right? We have these Askaris who sleep. Now the dog doesn't sleep. But now I've learned the difference between those two mechanisms. So you complement each other and you get to learn a little bit of that. Now, it is very important, therefore, to reflect from a wisdom perspective, to reflect and get to know what it is that you learn from your operation. A lot of us don't have a learning culture. I am talking about building a business which is going to be profitable. We must learn our businesses and get to know where are the hardships, where are the smooth sales, where are the issues that affect the people. We must be able to be infused within. Now, I'm not talking about having a spy network. Some of us tend to have a spy network. People just desist all these spy networks put around. I have seen clockings, I've seen cameras. These things don't, at the great extent, work. What works is the goodwill of the people. Do you have the goodwill? Do people support you? Do they, people feel that you are part of them? Because you're going to employ, you see. I have seen people doing family business. And the husband and wife do not even trust each other. So from that set, how do you expect the rest of the other people? Because when they speak with the wife, she speaks these are different. When they speak with the husband, the husband says these are different. So the employees are able to know which side to go when they want particular aspects. So we need to have a, an element of working together. Now, <clears throat> when cash, excuse me, when cash comes in, the figures become exciting because sometimes when the cash comes in, it's difficult to differentiate between whether this cash is profit now or over which this cash is still, you know, part of our cost of goods that we have sold available for sale. It is important for us to know that we must have a focus. This money before it is yours, it is still for the business. It is only at the level when the business will be able to give you what we call finally dividend that actually you can say that this business, this cash is mine. Therefore, all cash that comes in needs to be accounted for very well. We need to keep proper record. We need to get a way that we are able to understand our operation. Most of these guys you see in Tukubo have their knowledge of business almost at their fingertips. So by the time you're doing an audit for them, like when I did an audit for, by the time I told him that you've, you've made a loss, he said, I already knew. And the moment I told him now I need Musara, he says, I can't even pay you. You know why? Because it's you was just calculated and we've made a loss. So I can't pay you. So I ended up not being paid. So I removed ties. Now, from that time, I don't put on ties at all. You know why? Because these guys who make a lot of money more than me don't put on ties. So a tie is just locking me in poverty altogether. But with all due respect. With, a, with a, a lot of respect. So, it is important that me and you learn this particular thing. Very important. These guys are able to look at you. The moment they give you a job, they have the wisdom. You see why I'm emphasizing the wisdom thing? They have a way that they look at you. In fact, when you speak the five, five sentences and they tell you, 
you ask them, can I speak in Uganda or in English? They say, you speak in any language. What they've mastered, they've last mastered the language. The other day I was reading uh, Haji Brahim Chivirige's book and he was telling me that he didn't go to school, but the most important thing he, he, he struggled to understand was English. So this businessman understands the language of business. You're not going to trade in any of these places when you don't understand the language. Even if it's the local language, even if it's the Muyaya language, you get people saying things to every You don't understand what they're talking about. Or to Rabbi's side. You don't, they don't understand. So you must, you must get into that bit and infuse yourself with the culture of the people that you're going to be working with. Because when you infuse your, yourself within that culture, then it enables you to become more wise, you become more excited, then, um, then you work like Jesus at some, some point because then you'll know what happens within each of those areas. Friends, I need to let you know that it is not easy to start a business which you don't like. I always tell people that any formation of a business not only is formed on you being all those great things I've talked about, being uh, uh, imagining yourself and all those things, but you need to start something you like. And I tell people that it's nice that you can start something probably from your talent. If you are talented in X, Y, Z, please go in that area. And each of those areas can actually generate a business. I have a sister of mine who is very passionate about training young people. And before she realized she was training her children. Now, when she trained her children, eventually they now have gone, I think they, they call that pro pro program homeschooling. And now these children speak better English than the ones that of mine that have actually uh, gone to some of these great schools. So, but she had a passion. And now what was homeschooling has become now a school. And now what was a school has become now something that now she's able to do a TOT with other schools. So it is something that you can be able to do. And once you're able to do that, it becomes something that uh, uh, you learn. So doing something that you're passionate about, that you're talented in, can actually cause you to do and run a good business. But profit is not only determined by the classroom. Profit is entirely and entirely determined. Now, I need to summarize a little bit. You need to understand and love what you want to do and that which you are doing. You must also find out whether it is needed in society. You must be able to know, first and foremost, that the society needs it, but you have the capacity to have it delivered. If you don't have the capacity, how do you acquire that capacity? You need to develop passion, passion, enthusiasm. You need to develop energy. You need to develop a love. I don't know whether you understand falling in love. Some of you, the problem with this problem, you people are falling on love on WhatsApp. You're falling love on the social media. So you don't know about goose pimples. You know, when you fall in love about something, you even get goose pimples. Don't ask me how I fell in love. But let me tell you something very important. When you fall in love, even when a person just passes away, you get, you get fever. And if they can be able to come and check you around, they even think you have COVID. But let me tell you, 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 you just fall in love with this business. I have seen people who have fallen in love with their businesses. They dream businesses. They dream. Like I've seen a border border man. Somebody was uh, was uh, was uh, had come for me for, uh, to me for uh, for counseling, business counseling. But eventually the the boss went into some area. So the border border man at night when he's busy sleeping, he holds, you know, him to <laughs> prison. You know, you know. So so you can't see me kicking this side, but uh, it's as if starting the border border. You know. So it's. It's, you fall in love with your business. Your business becomes part of you. You become infused with your business. You become one and one with your business. Now, when your idea is in your brain, I have learned that sometimes we share these ideas with a few friends. But most of our friends are the negative forces. They don't see beyond the wall. So somebody who is not a visionary. You remember I told you about visionary? Somebody who is not a visionary cannot see the visionary thing. So identify for a visionary, and if you don't have one, start. When you start, you refine the things as they move on. When you start, there's no harm in starting. 
in the other COVID, the whole family, we did something we had never done. We started doing mandazis. We sold the mandazi on the street. And my children who were just caged into a wall, in a wall fence, they were taken care by daddy into a car. We free boys, so busy. They were taken on the street. And they were able to sell. And they sold a lot of money. Now these days, they're able to do things on their own. That, we made some small money. And then a lot of people became our friends. And I remember somebody now who wanted to start a bakery came to me and talked to me about the business. I gave him the idea. I earned money just by selling mandazas on the street. It looks stupid, but it's not stupid because we earned money. Now, a lot of people were asking for money during COVID. So, that, this idea of, you know, bouncing of an idea with a friend and people who don't seem to be birds of the same feather, please don't do it. Just go and start. If it hits you, you know where the mistakes are. But you must know the market. The kind of market you're going to go, if you sell those mandates in Kololo, you might not get the money. Kololo Tevajagagura. Am I talking about? Yeah, you must understand my thing. So you go where they need these things. We had to go. Yeah, you must know. The people who send in it do not take in send in Kololo. You find it in Nakasero. But I know the people who eat them also come from Kololo. But you see, you must stage yourself in the right place. Go and put the thing there. Talk here. I think these days we're even lucky we have masks. You can put on a mask very well, yeah, wherever you are, and nobody will even understand. Say, she looks like Barbara. Are we together? <laughs> so you're not, <laughs> they'll never be able to get. So it is nice that you go and try out these ideas. Then the other thing is that about when people buy from you, they're able to relate with you. Are you part of that business? Are you, or, or are you selling and you want to be away from, and you tell Akana, you tell like a child, you stay there where your, your younger brother, now that I'm even talking to these young people standing, you want your younger brother to be the one to be selling, but you want to be the one to hold the money. You see where the difference is? You want the other one to be saying, miembe, miembe, and it is you who is going to be holding the money. Why don't you go there and you say, miembe, miembe? After all, the miembe which you are selling today, one lemon is 1,500 in the market. One lemon like this. Don't ask me which markets I buy from. I am seriously telling you, it is serious. Now they know it's treats COVID. Now all these things which treat COVID, they seem to be. Now I've seen people doing all sorts of uh, concoctions. Eh? And you, are, you can also do concoctions and sell them. Concoction and say, you know, Jaja Wabana. No, what I'm saying, I am seriously saying, be creative. Get out of your skin and sell something. Somebody somewhere needs something. Go out and sell. And remember, be part of what you're selling. Friends, I must conclude. It's very important, but you must keep track of what it is that you're doing every day because a profitable business cannot be known unless if you have a structure of recording what it is that it costed you to have these things that you're going to sell, but also when you start selling them, getting to know how many did I sell the first day? How many did I sell in the second day? How many did I sell in the third day? You must be able to keep into that structure. Remember, you must also look around the prices that are around you. What are the rest of my competitors selling? If you don't sell price right, if you don't do have a price right, then you have a problem. People are going to reject you from you. So sometimes we have what we call an entry price. You have a price that you offer or you have a quantity expansion. That instead of selling three for 1,000 if they are pancakes, you're going to sell five for 1,000 in order to draw in people and then attract them then. But then, very important, that especially those of you that are going to start at a micro level, understanding to know your customer is very important. But even now I realize these big banks know us. They know us by name. They send us emails. They send us reminders. They call on us. And a big bank like this one, which I serve, the Sun Big Bank still cares about me as a customer. So you must care about your people. The customer is the king. The customer is the money, source of the money. The customer is the source of the business they're going to do. The customer is the consumer of the things they're going to be taking. So you need to get in there and show them like you're part of them. Follow them. Get to know. Now I'm seeing even doctors have started following up their clients. It is serious. Now they're saying, are you not sick? And you're telling me. <laughs> Doctors, no, they are crazy. They are calling, oh, oh, you know. And you wonder, this call, is it a sale? Is it, what is it like? So, friends, wherever you are, it is important that we get there. I must thank you for listening to me. But remember, any business which is not profitable is not a business.
If it is not profitable, get out of your way. I want to thank the Stanbic Bank through the Stanbic National School Championship for aiding Ugandans to get to get some knowledge from not only me, but many of the other people, just to make sure that we can be able to build and have a robust economy. What I know, COVID is here, but COVID is going to go. But even when it doesn't go, it will be like flu. It will be like any other disease. Which has, the difference is this one kills. So sanitize and have your mask on almost all the time, but also have a profitable business because without profit and COVID is a double target. God bless you. Thank you so much, Dennis Lindo. If you must forget anything, please don't forget in Sobekebo and and Gendekebo. <laughs> anyway, we realize there is a stark difference between wisdom and knowledge. And today, we learned it. Thank you so much. We can't express how grateful we are that we get to get this knowledge in the comfort of our home. Start those profitable businesses now. Please don't leave. Next, in the next session, we get to talk about how to get a grip of your personal finance. We are home, not all of us are earning, and we need to learn how best we will use what we have right now. Thank you so much for joining us today, and please stay tuned for the next sessions that will be equally and even more encouraging and educational. Bye now.